Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I have 25 watercolor pencil painting hacks to share with you. The first tip to share I have is use watercolor paper or a robust mixed media paper for best results. Number two, choose the right surface for your project. Hot press paper is smooth like drawing paper, but it's strong enough to stand up to all the techniques you're going to dish out. Cold press paper is the most popular paper. It's got a little bit of tooth to it, and rough paper is the roughest and is great for expressive strokes and landscapes where you want a little bit of a gritty line to show up in your final piece. Tip number three, tape down your paper to prevent it from warping, and it will give you a beautiful white border when you're done if you paint all the way to the edge. Tip number four, you can tape your paper to any drawing board you have or use cardboard backing from an old paper pad, or you can use inexpensive lightweight foam core. You could also use plywood or masonite or a free paneling sample like I do. The good thing about using plywood or masonite is that it is rigid and you can use it on an easel if you like. Tip number five, always test out new techniques or colors on a scrap of paper. You can use the backside of a failed painting for this. Tip number six, start with an accurate sketch. Watercolor pencil, like watercolor, is transparent so you can't simply cover up your mistakes and erasing on your watercolor paper can damage it. So you want to make sure the mistakes and corrections are done on your scrap paper and your drawing is good. Then you can transfer that to your fine paper with a light box or your window or some graphite paper. Tip number seven, make a palette for your watercolor pencils by sanding a cheap plastic palette or simply a scrap of plastic. Tip number eight, you could also pick up colors from the tip of your pencil with a wet brush and create wet washes and watercolor effects that way. Tip number nine, remember, anytime you wet your pencil lead, you weaken it and it will break more easily. So let it dry before trying to sharpen it. Tip number 10, sharpening tips. For a sharp point for drawing details, use a handheld or electric sharpener. Turn the sharpener, not the pencil, to avoid breakage. To conserve your lead for painting large areas, use a craft knife to whittle away the wood and leave the lead intact for painting. Tip number 11. You can add beautiful texture to your washes you create with watercolor pencils by spraying it with water while the wash is still wet. Tip 11. You can also add salt to a wet wash for beautiful snowflake-like sparkles. And tip number 13. You can grate dry watercolor pencil lead into a wet wash for flecks of darker color for a nice gran granite type of texture. Tip 14, for a dark line thinner and darker than you can get with a pencil, try scraping into the wet paint with the edge of a cut up credit card or gift card. It's great for fur, hair, and veins on flowers. Tip number 15, try not using water. You can draw and color with dry pencils on dry paper for a traditional colored pencil look. Try the hatching techniques for fur, cross hatching for shadow, or scumbling, aka scribbling, for textured effects. Tip number 16. For darker details that won't easily dissolve with water, try drawing with a sharp dry pencil on wet paper. That's called dry on wet. Tip number 17. Use a wet on dry technique for stippling. Simply dip the tip of a pencil in water and dot on details, like the dots on the muzzle of the cat that I'm drawing here, where the whiskers come out of. Tip number 18. You can also draw with a wet pencil on wet paper for bold expressive marks that will not easily dissolve. Tip number 19, build depth and dimension with glazes. Simply layer up veils and veils of color and shadow for realistic paintings full of depth and interest. Tip number 20, details are best on dry paper with a sharp pencil. Tip number 21, burnishing can be used to build up colors and create a smooth glassy look. To do this in watercolor pencils, I suggest coloring dry on dry and liquefying the pigment with water. Then after the first layer is dry, keep coloring with dry pencils until the grain of the paper is full and the pigment is rich and vibrant. Tip number 22. Create highlights by scratching off the top layer of paper with a craft knife. Just be careful not to cut too much paper away or cut through your paper. And don't cut yourself. Tip number 23, mix your media. A white paint pen or gel pen will make quick work of bright, elegant highlights. Tip number 24, you can also add traditional colored pencils over a watercolor pencil painting as a final layer, but be aware that watercolor pencil will not stick over traditional colored pencils. And tip number 25, when your painting is done and it's time to remove the tape, peel it back at a 45 degree angle with your paper and you want to pull it back kind of on itself to discourage the paper from tearing. If it still wants to tear, simply heat up the tape with a heat tool or a hair dryer and it will help it be removed easily. Thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it, if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you would like a full length version of this tutorial, you can find it on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.